welcome to the GPS Connect video series. This video will concentrate on connecting your GPS receiver to the GPS Connect tool within MapInfo Discover. The GPS Connect tool will connect to internal and external GPS receivers, both Bluetooth and USB. The GPS Connect tool also offers limited support for connecting your smartphone containing a GPS via Bluetooth. When connecting a smartphone to act as a GPS receiver, additional third-party software is required on the phone. Some of these phone applications can alter the raw NMEA sentences which are received from the satellites, so caution must be taken. The GPS Connect tool has been designed to be easy to use and intuitive. The biggest issue you will encounter is setting up and connecting your GPS receiver. Once the process is working, using the tool is easy. Before trying to set up a connection to a GPS receiver within MapInfo Discover, you must establish the connection between your computer or tablet and the GPS receiver. This may involve simply plugging in your device, pairing your device or installing a driver set to establish this connection. Please refer to the instructions which came with the GPS receiver. If your computer or tablet has an internal GPS, most of the hard work has already been done. All you will need to know is the COM port the GPS signal will be used on. An easy way of establishing this is to use the Windows Device Manager. I will now open up the Windows Device Manager. The GPS Connect tool establishes a connection using a Windows COM port. Within the Device Manager, navigate to and expand the port section. This one here. Although the name of the GPS receiver may not be apparent, an easy way to determine which port the GPS receiver is using is to simply unplug or turn off the GPS receiver. You will observe the port being removed. As we can see here, I've got a USB derived GPS receiver. I'll unplug. And you will see COM port 4 has been removed. Now I'll plug back in. and we can see COM port 4 has now been established. In this instance, port 4 is being used. This will be the port to configure for the GPS Connect tool. I'll just close down the device manager. To start using the tool, navigate to the GPS ribbon tab within MapInfo Discover. This one here. The GPS Setup button opens a dialog containing all the required tools to configure and connect to a GPS receiver. That's this button here. We'll click on that. To set up the GPS receiver connection, navigate to the Hardware tab. When setting up the GPS Connect tool, you must ensure that the GPS receiver is visible and connected to the computer or tablet. On the Hardware tab, select COM port as the connection method. An alternative method log file can be used at a later stage to play back recorded GPS streams. The protocol being used is fixed as NMEA. This is the standard system used by the national GPS carriers such as GPS, GLONOSS and Beidou. That's that one there. Select the COM port number of the GPS receiver, whether that is an internal or an external GPS receiver. In this instance, it's COM port 4. A Windows friendly name for the COM port is also displayed, which may assist you when selecting the correct COM port. So in this case, it's that one there. The next four options relate to the hardware configurations. The most important option here is the board rate, which is this one here, which is the speed at which the data is transferred from the GPS receiver. Generally, a GPS receiver is set to either 4800 or 9600 board rate. So either that one or that one. In this instance, it's 4800, so I'll select that. The following three options do not usually need to be modified. Usually under rare circumstances, these are modified. So we can leave them as parity set to none, data bits set to eight, and stop bits set to one. The final option on the hardware tab is to save the log file, this one here. If this option is checked and a path is 
to find, a log file will be created which records all the GPS information. This file can then be played back by selecting the previously mentioned log file connection method. That one here. To establish a connection between the GPS receiver and the GPS connect tool, press the GPS button. That's that one down in the bottom right. I'll click that. The button will turn from grey to green to indicate a connection is being established. If the connection is not valid, a message or warning prompt will appear. A quick way to determine if the correct settings such as COM port and board rate have been used is to navigate to the location tab. Within the NMEA sentence text box, you should observe a constant stream of NMEA sentences, beginning with a dollar sign. If you do not observe any data streaming, it is most likely you will need to adjust your COM port or board rate values. I will now demonstrate the incorrect use of a COM port or a board rate and the effect it has on this tool. So I'll turn off the connection and navigate back to hardware. Firstly, I'll modify the board rate, go back to location, and click connect. As you can see here, there are no NMEA sentences coming through. I'll turn the connection back off. This time, I'll set the board rate back to what it should be, 4800, and in this instance, I'll connect to the incorrect COM port. Navigate back to location and connect. And what we can see here, we're unable to connect to the COM port 11. So we're getting a visual prompt to tell us that something isn't correct. I'll go OK. Navigate back to hardware and I'll put in the correct COM port. And start the connection. And as we can see, the NMEA sentences are coming through. The GPS Connect tool is designed with several methods of determining the quality of the GPS data received from the available satellites. The quality icon at the bottom left of the dialog has three states. That's this one here. You've got the no signal fix, the 2D signal fix, and the 3D signal fix. To get the best precision or fix, 3D signal fix is the preferred quality option. This is displayed as a green icon. As I am located indoors, I'm not going to get a correct GPS positional fix. So what I'm going to do is navigate to the hardware tab and I'll use a predefined log file which will show me the correct positional fix of the GPS log. So I've gone ahead and I've selected a particular NMEA sentence. I'm going to turn on the GPS and navigate back to location. So this was taken outdoors. So now I can see here I've got a 3D signal fix. So it's telling me I've got a very good positional fix from my GPS satellites. Another method of determining the quality of the GPS data is to observe the fields in the location tab. All the fields must be receiving value data as the input. If any of these fields are blank, your positional fix is determined to be of poor quality. And as we can see here, all these fields are populated. Another indicator of the quality of the GPS data is the status in the satellite constellation tab. So if I click here, observing the satellite distribution may assist you in defining if an obstruction or an object is blocking signals from the satellite constellation. In this instance, we've got a fairly evenly distributed satellite constellation. The following will affect the quality and signal of the satellite constellation. Heavy tree cover, proximity to tall buildings, deeply incised valley walls, or if you're located within a building, just to name a few. The final indicator of quality are the dilution of precision values. That's these values down the bottom. An acceptable value is between 2 and 5. Any value much greater indicates a lower level of confidence in the positional fix. 
You should now be able to establish a connection to your GPS receiver. Please remember the GPS Connect tool will only display the current GPS position to the best quality of the hardware which is it's receiving information from. A low quality GPS receiver may take longer to establish a fix and cause the current GPS position to wander, resulting in a path walked to be erratic and not representative of the actual path. I'll just turn off the GPS receiver here and I'll minimize this particular dialog and I'm going to demonstrate some examples of good and poor GPS receivers. So firstly I'll turn on a good one. This was a path walked using the GPS connect tool and with a good quality receiver and as you can see it's nice and straight. I'll turn that one off. Now this is next path has been walked exactly the same but with a poor GPS receiver or bad coverage and as we can see you get quite an erratic coverage. Thank you for viewing this video on how to set up the GPS Connect tool.